Welcome back to Make Stuff Nation. In today's episode, we're going to work on the stem cap, cutting the dagger board slot, and building the dagger board case. Let's get to work. The first task at hand for fitting the stem cap is to finish trimming the bottom and side panels to meet up flush with the stem, and then trimming the keel flush with where we cut the side panels. panels trimmed into the stem and the joint where the keel meets the stem cap cleaned up, I can start working on the stem cap itself. I'm going to make the stem cap by laminating strips of wood to get this bend. I'll laminate them in place on the stem. What I need to do is measure the length of these strips and then we'll start milling up 1 8 inch thick strips and we'll probably need three or four of them to get this full thickness. The stem cap at its thickest dimension should be about 3 8 of an inch. Once we get it glued in place then we'll fare it in and put the radius on the front of the boat. I've decided I'm going to make the stem cap out of this piece of walnut that I have. It's a good dense wood so it'll be good for abrasion resistance on the stem. I'm not going to be too worried about rot resistance because it's going to be covered with an epoxy finish. Now I need to start milling it down to three and a half inch wide, 40 inch long, 1 8 inch thick strips. the stem cap epoxied in place and ready to cure. Let me walk you through how I made it. You saw that I was milling up the walnut into the 1 8 inch strips that we talked about earlier. Once I had those all milled up on the table saw, I used a hand plane to take off any of the saw marks or rough edges. Then I mixed up some epoxy and put the first layer in place. I used a brad nailer to nail that strip down and I kept the nails inside of where it's going to be trimmed off so they'll be hidden by the next layer. From there I mixed up some more epoxy and put on the second layer. Again, use some brad nails inside of where it will be trimmed down to so they'll be hidden by the following layer. I did the same thing for layer three and then for layer four which is the final layer I put on the epoxy put the layer four down and then put on a false layer on top of that that has packing tape on it so the epoxy won't stick to it. That false layer allowed me to drive brad nails in without damaging the top layer and then once it's cured I can take this top false layer off and that will expose the heads of those brad nails so I can pull them out. Then I'll just have some very teeny little holes on the top finished layer that I'll have to fill. After I had everything nailed in place, I added these ratchet straps to add even more clamping pressure, make sure everything is held down nice and tight while the epoxy cures. While the stem cap cures, we're going to move on to making the dagger board case. The snipe class design specs have changed quite a bit over the years for the dagger board case. Originally, in the building of plywood snipe book, the dagger board case was almost as tall as the shear of the boat. But in the new snipe class standards, it's a maximum height of 313 millimeters at the aft end of the case. So that's much shorter as you saw in the layout the work that we did back in the early videos. What I've done, instead of having to reference the layout work and run back and forth between the house and the shop, I went into Fusion 360 and just drew up a diagram of the dagger board case. You have a bed log on either side that's one inch by four inches or 101 millimeters by 25 millimeters. The sides of the dagger board case are 622 millimeters by 313 millimeters. And then we have solid mahogany spacers that are 12 millimeters by 38 millimeters. 
and those set the width of the dagger board case slot. 12 millimeters for the spacers and the dagger board case slot will keep the width of that dagger board case slot within the specifications of the snipe class. For a plywood snipe, the maximum dagger board case slot width is 14 millimeters. I've got all the materials rounded up for the dagger board case. I have the three quarter inch Marinti mahogany marine plywood left over from cutting out the transom for the sides of the case. I have this piece of solid mahogany for the spacers of the case. I have this piece of rough sawn white oak for the bed log. First thing I'm going to do is cut the white oak and mahogany to approximate length and then mill it to the correct dimension. After I get that done, we'll cut it to final length and then we'll start cutting the sides out of the plywood. Here are the completed parts of the dagger board case. I've got two bed logs, the two side panels, and then the two spacers. I've intentionally cut the spacers long so that they will slot down into the dagger board slot and help me align and position the dagger board case while I scribe the bed logs to the keel batten and then while I attach it in place. Once the dagger board case is permanently attached, I'll trim off the bottom of these spacers flush with the bottom or the outside of the keel. The dagger board case will sit in this configuration in the boat. Before I assemble this dagger board case, I need to waterproof the inside of the dagger board slot. Once it's assembled, it's going to be too narrow to get any sort of paintbrush in there to seal it properly. To waterproof this, I'm going to use one or two coats of epoxy. I'm not going to add any thickener because I want the epoxy to soak in as much as possible. So I'm going to clean these boards, add one coat of epoxy, wait a couple of hours for it to begin to cure, and then add a second coat. Once I've added that second coat, I can go ahead and add the mahogany spacers and start to attach them to Together. This boat's not going to sit in the water year round. It's meant to be taken out of the water when you're not sailing it. So I'm not too worried about rot, but I still want this to be protected. Instead of epoxy, you could also use a varnish or some sort of marine paint. I'm using a plaque stick scraper to make sure I got an even coat and also take off any excess. Spacers just sit flush with the ends of the side panels. Well, that's a good start to the assembly of the dagger board case. I'm gonna let this epoxy cure overnight, and then tomorrow we can epoxy on the bed logs. It's been a few days and the epoxy on the stem cap is cured, so let's take off these straps and the sacrificial layer and see how it turned out. straps and brad nails removed, now I'm just using a block plane to fare in the stem cap with the bottom and side panels. I finished fairing in the stem cap on both sides. I'm happy with how it turned out. The last thing I'm going to have to do to finish the stem cap is to add the radius right on the front of the boat. And I'm going to do that when I'm sanding the boat and prepping it for the exterior finish. With the epoxy holding the sides onto the spacers cured, now we're going to go ahead and attach the bed logs to the dagger board case. They're going to attach flush with the bottom of the side panels.
I've double checked my alignment, making sure the bed logs are flush with the sides and bottom of the dagger board case. While it's curing, I'm gonna go ahead and work on cutting the dagger board slot. The rules for the Snipe Class Association require that the aft edge of the dagger board when it's down needs to be 2,438 to 2,464 millimeters behind the stem of the boat. The slot that I need to cut for the dagger board is actually longer than that though because the spacers that hold the sides of this dagger board trunk apart extend down through the keel and keel batten and are cut off flush with the bottom of the keel. Those spacers are 38 millimeters long so I need to add 38 millimeters to each one of these tolerances. That gives me 2,476 to 2,502 millimeters aft of the stem for the aft edge of the slot that I'm going to cut. That's approximately eight feet, two and a half inches. The tolerance between these two dimensions is 26 millimeters or approximately one inch. So I have some flexibility on where I position this dagger board slot. The dagger board case itself is 623 millimeters long. So that's going to be the length of the slot that I need to cut. So the fore edge of the slot needs to be at 1,853 millimeters to 1,879 millimeters aft of the stem. I finished laying out the dagger board slot. I just offset five millimeters either side of the center line to give me the 10 millimeter wide dagger board slot. Now I'm gonna set up some guides for my router so I can cut this out. I'm gonna use my router to start cutting this dagger board slot. I've got a 3 8 inch router bit installed, and I'm also using a pattern bit. This pattern bit has a collar with a half inch outside diameter that I'm gonna run down this slot that I tacked on with two board. That's gonna keep the router in the correct channel, and then I've tacked on end blocks for where the dagger board slot is gonna start and stop. So I can set the pattern bit in that slot and then move the router side to side gradually plunging it down till I cut all the way through. Now that I have the dagger board slot routed all the way through, I just need to use a chisel to clean up the corners, square them off. Obviously this dagger board case is going to be mounted on the inside of the boat, but this just lets me know that I have the fit right for the spacers and for the dagger board slot. Here's the fit of the dagger board slot from the inside of the boat. You can see frame three, when we get the boat flipped upright and are ready to install the dagger board case, we're going to cut out the middle section of this frame and the frame will attach to the bed logs. In the final fit, these spacers will stick out through the bottom or the keel of the boat. And we'll just cut them off flush with the keel. With the rough fit of the dagger board case complete, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. I'm really happy with how the walnut stem cap turned out, and this dagger board case went together much easier than I expected. The router was definitely the right tool for cutting the dagger board slot once I got set up with a pattern bit and a jig.
Now I have to make some tough decisions though on how I'm going to proceed next. I could flip the boat upright and start working on the deck work and interior fittings of the boat. Or I could leave the boat upside down on the jig and start finishing the bottom and sides. If I was to do that, I need to finish sanding in the radius on the stem cap and then patch all the holes from the clamping screws and fill any gaps in the seams of the joinery that I may have missed. After all those holes are filled, I'm going to need to sand the exterior of the boat and then I'm going to apply a four inch wide fiberglass tape to all the joints and seams. That's going to protect any of the exposed end grain at a lot of strength and really help with waterproofing and durability. Once I have those joints taped, then I can get started with the exterior finish. I'm planning on using an epoxy finish covered with a varnish or some other type of clear coat for UV protection. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. If you want updates between these videos, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, all at Make Stuff Nation. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below as I read every single one. If you have any questions about equipment I use, materials, or links to external sources I've mentioned, I put most of those down in the description. Thanks again for watching Make Stuff Nation. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.